the unfathomable grace of God. Within the depths of God's grandeur and magnificence lays His unfathomable grace, a mighty force unseen, powerful, and sovereign. Its glow penetrates the hardened human heart, presenting not just a sparkle of hope, but a torrent of relentless, unmerited favor. Each drop of this divine grace trickles into the crevices of our souls, soothing the burns etched by sin's fiery arrows and rehydrating the parched lands of our spirit left barren by transgression. God's grace is like a silent whisper that crescendos into a symphony of love, echoing through the valleys of despair and peaking the mountains of our highest joys. It is an unearned gift, lavished upon us despite our unworthiness, like dew settling softly upon a withered rose, giving life and beauty where there is frailty and decay. The grace of God doesn't consult our past before deciding its presence. It only sees our need and rushes to meet it. This grace, remarkable and boundless, not only rescues but also transforms. It isn't satisfied with mere salvation but insists on sanctification. It redeems the lost, yes, but also refines the found. Its work is comprehensive, leaving no stone unturned, no darkness unlit, no chain unbroken. Through grace, we undergo metamorphosis, from broken and blind to healed and sighted, from slaves to sin to heirs of glory. Yet, this grace is no passive force. It actively empowers us to tread the path of righteousness, illuminating the road with the brilliant light of God's Word. Like a compass in the hands of a sailor lost at sea, grace guides us back to the Father, back home. It not only shows us the way, but gives us the strength to walk it, the faith to believe it, and the hope to endure it. Let the heart steeped in the knowledge of this grace not remain stoic and unmoved. For grace is not a dormant doctrine, it demands a dynamic response, a life of worship, a walk of obedience, a work of service. With grace as our canvas, may our lives paint a masterpiece that reflects the beauty of our Lord, bringing glory to the painter of the skies, the author of grace. Dive deep, dear soul, into the ocean of His grace, for in its depths you'll find treasures untold, love unbounded, and joy unending. This grace is the melody that turns our mourning into dancing, our weeping into laughing, and our loss into gain. Indeed, the grace of God is a well that never runs dry, a sun that never sets, and a love that never ends. From this oceanic expanse of God's grace emerge truths that beckon our contemplation and reflection. With eager hearts and minds sharpened by the Spirit, let us delve into seven profound insights that this grace so generously unveils to us. Number one, grace saves the unworthy. The inherent beauty of God's grace is most vividly seen in its radical embrace of the unworthy. This is the bedrock of our faith, the anthem of our songs, and the confession of our souls. In the realm of human transactions, we operate on a merit-based system where our actions warrant a commensurate response. But with God, the scales of justice and mercy are intertwined in a profound mystery that upends our human perceptions. When we take an honest introspection of our lives laid bare before a holy God, our unworthiness becomes startlingly clear. Sin has not merely brushed our lives, it has tainted our very essence, leaving scars, creating chasms, and distorting our image-bearing nature. From the Garden of Eden to the corners of our personal histories, humanity's track record is marred by disobedience, rebellion, and pride. Yet, this tragic backdrop is what makes the narrative of grace so compelling. For while we were engrossed in our sin, imprisoned by our choices, and estranged from our Creator, the voice of grace echoed through the corridors of eternity. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. 
This statement isn't merely a theological point, but the very heartbeat of the gospel. Imagine, if you will, the creator of the cosmos in all his glory and holiness, extending his hand not to the righteous, but to the rebel, not to the deserving, but to the defiant. This is grace in action, unearned, undeserved, and unmerited. It's the celestial paradox where God's justice and mercy converge at the cross, where Jesus bore the weight of our sins, offering us righteousness in exchange for our unworthiness. Salvation, therefore, is not a wage we earn through our deeds, but a gift we receive because of His deed. The weight of our sin, the depth of our rebellion, and the scope of our unworthiness in the light of grace become testimonies of God's unfathomable love. They serve as monuments, not to our own glory, but to the one who calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light. In understanding that grace saves the unworthy, our hearts are drawn into a posture of humility, gratitude, and profound worship. For we recognize that we stand not on our own merits, but purely and wholly on the boundless grace of God. Number two, grace transforms lives. The resounding echo of grace, once it touches the human heart, is not one of mere acquittal, but of profound transformation. While salvation is the doorway, the journey that ensues is a tapestry of change, renewal, and rebirth that grace meticulously weaves into our lives. And in this tapestry, every thread, every hue, and every pattern testifies to the transformative power of grace. When grace enters a life, it does not simply patch up the old. It births something entirely new. The Apostle Paul, himself a profound testament to this transformation, declared, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. This is not a mere change in behavior or attitude, but a metamorphosis of identity. Much like a caterpillar that undergoes a process to emerge as a butterfly, so too does grace rework, reshape, and redefine who we are. But what does this transformation entail? At its core, it's a journey from death to life, from bondage to freedom, from blindness to sight. Where once there was a heart of stone, Grace replaces it with a heart of flesh, responsive and attuned to God. The mind, once clouded with worldly pursuits, is renewed with eternal perspectives. Desires, once anchored in the temporal, now soar in the realms of the eternal. What was once a life marked by self-centeredness begins to orbit around the Son, Jesus Christ. Yet this transformation is not always immediate or without struggle. Like a master sculptor, grace chisels away at our imperfections, sometimes gently and sometimes with forceful blows, shaping us into the likeness of Christ. There will be moments of pain, periods of waiting, and episodes of doubt. But through it all, the steady hand of grace never falters, always working, always shaping, and always molding. In witnessing the transformative power of grace, we also become acutely aware of its reach. No one is beyond its grasp. From the hardened criminal to the self-righteous Pharisee, from the destitute on the streets to the monarch in the palace, grace knows no bounds. Its transformative touch is available to all, waiting to turn mourning into dancing and ashes into beauty. In sum, grace is not content with mere rescue. Its ambition is radical transformation. It seeks not only to save, but to sanctify, not only to pardon, but to purify. And as recipients of this transformative grace, our lives become living testimonies, radiant beacons of hope, and resounding anthems of God's unwavering love and power. Number three, grace empowers obedience. In the symphony of God's redeeming work, grace is not merely a passive note that lingers in the background. It is a dynamic and driving force that propels the believer into a life of obedience. 
When we contemplate grace, we might initially see it as God's benevolent response to our rebellion, a divine pardon issued from the throne of heaven. And while this perspective is true and profound, grace also has another dimension, a transformative and empowering facet that moves the believer from a state of passive reception to active participation in God's kingdom. To perceive grace merely as a license for complacency or as an endorsement of continued rebellion would be to misunderstand its profound depth and purpose. The Apostle Paul clarifies this when he writes to Titus, saying, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in the present age. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 12. In these words, we glean an essential truth. Grace does not merely rescue, it also refines. But how does grace achieve this empowerment for obedience? At its core, grace initiates a heart transformation. Where once there was enmity towards God's commands, now there is a love for them. Where the statutes of the Lord were once burdensome, they now become a delight. This transformation is not wrought by human effort or sheer willpower, but by the indwelling Spirit, gifted to us through grace. The Spirit convicts, counsels and comforts, guiding us into all truth and enabling our obedience. Furthermore, grace reminds us continually of the price paid for our redemption. When we grasp the depth of our sin and the height of Christ's sacrifice, our hearts are stirred with gratitude. This gratitude, born from understanding the weight of God's grace, becomes a powerful motivator. It moves us to live, not for ourselves, but for the one who gave himself for us. Our obedience then becomes a love response, a worshipful expression of our profound gratitude. Another vital aspect to consider is that grace in empowering obedience also offers grace when we falter. Our journey of obedience is not without stumbles and falls, yet in those moments of weakness, it's the grace of God that lifts us up, dusts us off, and sets our feet back on the path. It whispers to our hearts that our failures are not the end, and that God's mercies are new every morning. In essence, grace is the divine catalyst that spurs us towards a life of holiness and obedience. It is the gentle wind beneath our wings, the fire in our bones, and the song in our hearts. Through grace, obedience is no longer seen as a mere duty, but as a joyful privilege, a chance to reciprocate the love that was first shown to us. In the dance of divine love, grace leads, and our obedience joyfully follows. Number four. Grace sustains in trials. Life's journey, with its unpredictable terrains of joy and sorrow, success and failure, health and sickness, often casts shadows of trials that can darken our paths and weigh heavily upon our souls. It's during these tumultuous times, when the winds of adversity are howling and the storms of life are raging, that the sustaining power of God's grace shines most brilliantly. Grace, often perceived as God's unmerited favor in salvation, also plays a crucial role as our steadfast anchor in life's storms. It serves as a divine embrace that wraps around the broken, the hurting, and the weary, whispering words of comfort, hope, and strength. When our own reservoirs of resilience run dry, it's the ever-flowing stream of God's grace that replenishes our spirits and renews our strength. One of the most poignant portrayals of this sustaining grace can be seen in the life of the Apostle Paul. Besieged by a thorn in the flesh, a mysterious affliction that tormented him, Paul earnestly pleaded with God for its removal. And the divine response was a profound revelation. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Here, 
we find that God's grace isn't just a remedy to remove our trials, but a resource to sustain us through them. The promise isn't always about liberation from our troubles, but about fortification amidst them. This sustaining grace reorients our perspective. Trials, instead of being mere ordeals to endure, become platforms where God's power is displayed. Weakness, rather than a condition of defeat, becomes a conduit for divine strength. In the crucible of suffering, our limitations make room for God's limitless grace, turning our trials into testimonies and our pain into praise. Furthermore, grace not only provides strength, but also grants wisdom. It helps us discern the purpose behind the pain, the reason behind the rain, and the lesson behind the lesson. Grace assures us that our trials are not random, aimless events, but divinely appointed moments woven meticulously into the tapestry of God's sovereign plan. And while we may not always understand the why behind every trial, grace instills in us the trust that God's purposes are always for our good and His glory. But perhaps the most comforting aspect of this sustaining grace is its promise of presence. In the midst of trials, when we feel abandoned by the world and overwhelmed by our circumstances, grace whispers the sweet assurance, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. It's the promise that in every fiery furnace there's a fourth figure, in every lion's den there's a divine protector, and in every valley of shadows there's a shepherd leading the way. In conclusion, the trials of life, though filled with pain and perplexity, are also platforms where the sustaining grace of God is magnified. For it's in the darkest nights that stars shine the brightest, and it's in our deepest trials that God's grace proves most triumphant. When the waves rise and the ground shakes, let our hearts take refuge in this truth. God's grace is not only saving, transforming, and empowering, it's also eternally sustaining. Number five, grace freely given. Demands a response. In the grand theater of divine revelation, where God unveils his character and purposes to humanity, grace stands as a mesmerizing act that captures the heart and stirs the soul. This divine grace, poured out in abundance, is a gift of incomprehensible magnitude, a display of love that transcends our understanding. And while it's freely given, without strings attached or conditions to meet, it possesses an innate potency that draws forth a response from its recipients. When confronted with the reality of such a grace, a grace that bridges the chasm of our sins, redeems our broken pasts, and offers hope for our futures, it becomes impossible to remain passive. Like sunlight piercing through the morning mist, grace illuminates the deepest recesses of our souls, revealing both our inherent need and God's boundless supply. And in this divine encounter, indifference becomes untenable. This grace, manifested supremely in the person and work of Jesus Christ, speaks of a love so profound that God himself bore our sins and suffered on our behalf. When we truly grasp the gravity of this truth, how can our hearts not be moved? How can our lives not be transformed? The very essence of grace calls forth a reaction, a movement of the soul toward its divine benefactor. The nature of this response is multifaceted. Firstly, there's a response of gratitude, recognizing that we've been given what we could never earn and forgiven what we could never repay, our hearts overflow with thankfulness. This isn't mere lip service, but a deep-seated gratitude that permeates our thoughts, words, and actions. Then, there's a response of surrender. Understanding that grace has bought us at a price, the natural inclination is to yield our lives to the one who gave his all for us. This surrender isn't born out of obligation, but out of love, a desire to align our wills with His and to live in a manner worthy of the grace we've received. Furthermore, 
grace evokes a response of proclamation. When one encounters such a monumental love, the urge to share it becomes overwhelming. Like a city on a hill or a lamp on a stand, the life touched by grace becomes a beacon, drawing others to its light and pointing them to the source of its radiance. Lastly, grace demands a response of action. James, in his epistle, reminds us that faith without works is dead. While we're saved by grace through faith and not by our works, the grace that saves us inevitably propels us to work, serving others, loving our neighbors, and seeking justice. In essence, while grace is freely given, it is by no means passive in its intent. It's an active force, a catalyst that instigates change, incites passion, and initiates movement. It invites us, beckons us, and challenges us to respond. And in this divine dance of grace, where God takes the lead and we follow, our response becomes our rhythm, a symphony of gratitude, surrender, proclamation, and action that resonates with the melody of heaven. Number six, grace leads to humility. At the crossroads of human existence, where the vast expanse of divine love intersects with our intrinsic need, stands the monument of grace, casting its long shadow of humility. Grace, in its very essence, stands antithetical to human pride and self-sufficiency. It's a constant reminder of our inadequacy and God's overwhelming sufficiency. And as this reality dawns upon the soul, humility naturally blossoms, for in the light of grace, all human boasting scatters like mist before the sun. Consider the origins of grace. It is not birthed from human merit, but is a response to human deficiency. Grace, by definition, is unmerited favor. It's receiving blessings we haven't earned and pardon we don't deserve. And so, when we truly grasp the concept of grace, it becomes abundantly clear that it leaves no room for pride. How can one boast of a gift that was freely given, not earned? How can one stand haughty when they've been lifted from a pit they could never climb out of on their own? Furthermore, grace constantly points us to the cross, the ultimate symbol of sacrifice and love. Here, we see the King of glory, the creator of the universe, laying down his life for his creation. Jesus, in all his majesty, humbled himself to the point of death, even death on a cross. This profound act showcases that the very nature of grace is steeped in humility. And as recipients of this grace, how can our response be anything but a life marked by similar humility? The Apostle Paul, who himself experienced a radical transformation by grace, penned these words, What do you have that you did not receive? If then you received it, why do you boast as if you did not receive it? 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. His words encapsulate the crux of the matter. Everything we have, our talents, our possessions, our very breath, is a result of God's grace. Recognizing this not only fosters gratitude, but also cultivates humility. Moreover, grace brings to light our shared humanity. It reminds us that, regardless of our backgrounds, achievements, or social status, we are all beneficiaries of God's grace. We all stand on level ground at the foot of the cross, equally in need of God's mercy. This realization dismantles barriers, dispels prejudices, and diminishes our self-imposed pedestals, urging us to view others with the same grace-tinted lenses with which God views us. In essence, grace acts as a mirror, reflecting not our own glory, but the glory of the one who bestows it. It reveals our flaws, not to shame us, but to draw us closer to the perfect love of our Savior. It strips away our pretenses and lays our souls bare, showing us that our true strength lies not in self-reliance, but in God-reliance. And as we walk this journey of faith, with each step molded by grace, humility becomes our constant companion, guiding us closer to the heart 
of the one from whom all blessings flow. Number seven, grace culminates in eternal glory. Grace in its profound journey through the tapestry of our lives is not a mere transient visitor that graces our present. It carries with it a promise, an assurance, an inheritance that stretches beyond the confines of our earthly existence and reaches into the timeless expanse of eternity. Grace, as wondrous as it is in our temporal sojourn, finds its ultimate fulfillment and consummation in the glorious promise of an eternal communion with our Creator. From the genesis of creation, God's overarching narrative has been one of reconciliation. The fall introduced a rift, a vast chasm between humanity and divinity. Yet even in that moment of rebellion and separation, the seeds of grace were sown, heralding a plan of redemption. As history unfolded, this grace was progressively revealed, culminating in the redemptive work of Christ on the cross. But the story doesn't end there. The cross and resurrection are but the pivotal points in God's eternal narrative of grace. The Apostle Peter captures this beautifully when he writes, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. Here, we see a promise that transcends our momentary afflictions and points towards an eternal glory. Our present struggles, as real and painful as they might be, are dwarfed when juxtaposed against the backdrop of eternal glory that grace guarantees. For the believer, grace is the golden thread that weaves through the fabric of our lives, connecting our earthly experiences with our heavenly destiny. Every moment of forgiveness, every instance of divine provision, and every touch of God's favor on earth serves as a foretaste, a divine appetizer of the boundless grace we will experience in eternity. Heaven, in all its splendor, will not just be a place of eternal peace, but an everlasting celebration of God's grace. But what does this culmination look like? It is an existence where tears, pain, and death are no more. It is a reality where the sorrows of yesterday are swallowed up in the joys of an endless tomorrow. It is a realm where the broken are made whole, the persecuted are vindicated, and the downtrodden are exalted. It's the space where our finite understanding of grace will unfurl into an infinite appreciation as we stand face to face with the author of grace. Moreover, this eternal glory is not just a passive state of bliss. It's an active participation in God's kingdom where grace equips us to reign, serve, and worship in ways we can scarcely imagine now. It's where the melodies of grace become harmonious songs of worship, and our testimonies of grace become timeless tales of God's faithfulness. In conclusion, while grace is our present comfort and guide, it is also our future hope and crown. It reminds us to set our eyes not on the transient and fleeting, but on the eternal and enduring. For grace, in all its earthly beauty, is but a shadow, a reflection, of the immeasurable and incomprehensible glory that awaits every believer. Grace, in its fullness, culminates in an eternity where God's love, mercy, and presence are our eternal treasure and joy. The grace of God, an ever-flowing river, courses through the annals of time and the stories of countless souls, leaving in its wake tales of redemption, renewal, and relentless love. It is not merely a theological construct or a comforting idea. It is the very heartbeat of the divine, a living testament to God's unfathomable desire to embrace, heal, and elevate humanity. As we immerse ourselves in this inexhaustible well of grace, myriad truths unfold, each beckoning us closer to the heart of the One, who is grace personified. From the grand tapestry of God's grace, we first discern that grace saves the unworthy. 
It doesn't wait for us to clean up our act or reach a certain standard. It meets us in our mess, loves us in our brokenness, and redeems us in our rebellion. This liberating truth shatters the chains of performance-based acceptance and anchors our souls in God's unconditional love. Next, we witness how grace doesn't merely rescue, but radically transforms. It is like the masterful hand of a potter, taking the marred clay of our lives and reshaping it into vessels of honor. Through grace, we transition from spiritual paupers to princely heirs, from wanderers in the desert to dwellers in the palace. Furthermore, the grace of God empowers obedience. Instead of fostering complacency or promoting licentiousness, it kindles a passionate desire to walk in God's ways. By the Spirit's power, grace not only instructs us but also equips us to live righteously, turning commands from burdens into blessings. Then, as we navigate life's tumultuous waters, we discover the sustaining power of grace during trials. In moments of despair and valleys of shadows, grace is the comforting embrace, the reassuring voice, and the guiding light. It doesn't promise the absence of storms, but guarantees the presence of the Savior amidst the waves. Moreover, the very nature of grace, so freely and generously bestowed upon us, demands a response. It urges us to rise from passive recipients to active participants in God's redemptive plan. It compels us to echo God's grace in our interactions, to forgive as we've been forgiven, and to love as we've been loved. Inevitably, as we gaze upon the vast expanse of God's grace, humility becomes our posture. Recognizing that we stand not by our merits, but by His mercy, pride dissolves, and a humble acknowledgement of our dependence on God emerges. Lastly, grace paints a vivid portrait of our future, culminating in eternal glory. It whispers of a day when tears will be no more, where grace will be our eternal anthem, and where every redeemed soul will bask in the unfiltered presence of the Almighty. In the embrace of such a profound grace, how can our hearts not overflow with gratitude, our lips not sing of His praises, and our lives not radiate His love? The grace of God isn't just the starting point of our journey. It's our guiding star, our sustaining force, and our final destination. Let it be our joy, our strength, and our song, today and forevermore. Thank you so much for joining us and lending your valuable time to listen. We're on a beautiful journey exploring the depths of God's Word together here at Gospel Illuminations. If you're hungry for more insights, for more light shared on the wonders of our faith, make sure you subscribe to the Gospel Illuminations channel. Every click, every share, every comment helps in illuminating the Gospel to all corners of the world. Don't miss out on what we've got coming next. Now, as we close, let me leave you with this benediction from Jude verses 24 through 25. Now to Him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy, to God our Saviour, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. May His words resonate in your hearts. Stay blessed and see you soon on Gospel Illuminations.